Okay, so I'm doing a volt gauge conversion here. So this is the amp gauge that I had in the truck. It's not the original one to the truck. I don't know what the original one to the truck looked like. Actually, scratch that. Uh, it didn't have one originally, it just had an idiot light. So this is the one out of the gauge cluster that was in the truck and I didn't have it hooked up because it's an amp gauge and I'm running a much higher amp alternator and all that stuff. And it has two poles on it. And this is the one out of the donor gauge cluster and it has three poles on it for some reason, don't know why. Both of those are for measuring current though, not voltage. So I wanted to do a volt gauge. So what I did is I got a gauge out of this, what year is this thing supposed to be? Uh, 70-something. 70 70-something. 70 Square body of some year gauge cluster had a volt gauge right there. That's what the dial looked like. And so the bodies looked pretty much the same as this one, except the guts were different. And so what I did on both the the amp gauge and the volt gauge from the square body, drilled out both rivets, took both face plates off. There's what the uh, the amp gauge looks like. It only has you know one loop of wires. The other one it has them going this way and then this way too. And so what I did is this is the voltmeter from this gauge cluster. It also has three poles on it, like this amp gauge. And I had to drill a third hole here because the gauge that came out of it didn't have that third pole for whatever reason. And so uh, I haven't hooked it up yet like this, but this should be uh, 12 volts. And then this third terminal up here is ground. So I'm just pulling power from the uh, from the temperature gauge, because this wire runs all the way around. And it's the power terminal for the fuel gauge, the warning lights, and that stuff. And the temperature gauge, so I just tied it over here. And so, I didn't have any rivets, so I just took some little nails and poked them through the uh, where the rivets went, and then JB welded the back of it here, and it's all taped up still, because it's still setting up. So that's good. It's going to hold the face plate on. And then the needle, the needles both just pulled off. And so this is the one from the square body. Don't need it. I put the factory one for the amp gauge back on there. And so what we did is we hooked the gauge up, put it to 12 volts, and then centered the needle. So when the needer, needle is dead centered. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to talk, okay? There's a lot to explain here. <laughs> and so I switched the needles over and so when the needle is dead centered in the gauge that's actually 12 volts and we did that by hooking the gauge up to the battery and then putting the needle on and centering it so it goes all the way to the discharge side whenever it's not hooked up to anything and so that is pretty much the only modification there just make sure that everything had an insulating plate on it and then I bolted everything down and put the multimeter on it and made sure none of the terminals were going to ground because I didn't want to you know immediately blow a fuse and then have to pull everything back apart but yeah so pretty simple so it'll work as a volt gauge but it'll look completely stock so we're gonna go ahead and get it all put back together all right been a minute since I've had this gauge cluster out by all the chipped off paint you can tell it's happened many a time but here is the final wiring setup so we have that power wire and then there's the ground and then these original terminals i just folded and taped up here i guess i could have cut them off but i don't know i just tape them up for now i doubt i'd ever need them but maybe i would so i'll just leave them i gotta put it back together now also a random tip if your lights or wipers ever start screwing up uh, check to see if any of these wires are loose. The wipers kept acting weird, and I pulled the plug off and everything looked fine until I pulled on the black wire here and it came out of the plug. So that's why the wipers were acting weird. The lights did the same thing and I had to had to fix it. You just pull the spade connector out 
and there's that little tab there. You just push it back out and clip it back in and make sure it stays and everything should be good. All right, I just fixed the black one and now I popped the blue one in and it did the exact same thing. So pull it out, kick the little tab out, put it back in and plug it back in and make sure that they're all in where they're supposed to be. Because see, this one came unclipped. The tab's all pushed in, so push the tab back out and put it back together and it should stay. All right, so this thing, thank you, has given me hell the last 48 hours. And so a forum post was where I got this whole idea from. Someone else had done this. This wasn't my original idea. But I wired it up the way that they had it and the way that I thought it was supposed to go. And the gauge would work, but it would read almost exactly the same at 12 and 14 volts. So whether the, the truck was running or not, you really couldn't tell the difference if the battery was charging or, or discharging. And I switched the wires around. I was messing with it a whole bunch, not going anywhere with it. And what I realized, well, you know, once I applied the mind, was that uh, the way that this guy had had it wired up, he had this power wire coming over to this terminal, but this terminal wasn't hooked, wasn't clipped into the gauge cluster that this gauge came out of. And I forgot about this thing that was on here, which I thought was just to insulate the terminals, but this is actually a resistor. So power comes in here and then runs through this resistor to this third terminal. And then I took out the insulating piece for this terminal because it's the ground. And so I just put a nut on it to ground it to the case instead of having to have another wire floating around. And so we hooked it up, just sitting on top of the battery, got it to, at just 12 volts without the motor running and set the needle just a little bit on the discharge side and pressed it on there. And it all seemed to be working. So I'm gonna put it back in now and see if it finally works or if this is just gonna be a continuing deal. All right, up under the dash here. So I was kind of a fool. You don't have to take the gauge cluster out to actually work on any of this. You can get to all of it right here once you pull the parking brake forward. But yeah, so there's the deal. I just taped the printed circuit up just so it doesn't touch on those. I didn't cut the terminals off, I guess I could have. I just taped it because who knows, might need them for something at some point. So yeah, there's my power wire. I'm just pulling power off of the, uh, the power for the gauge cluster. So I'm tied onto the power terminal for the temp, send, uh, temp gauge. And that also runs through the warning lights and the fuel sending gauge or the fuel gauge. So that's where it's getting power from. And so it is fused because this all this whole circuit that it's tied into is fused. So got everything back together. And it's reading voltage. So looks stock, but it's a volt gauge. And that way I don't have to mess with an amp gauge and it, you know, burning the truck to the ground or something. It's just so cool. I like it.